Good morning, everybody. Okay, so we're on day four of the Mega Squirt and Saw. It's, it's taking so long because I'm only doing a little bit at night, every night, and so that, or every day, I've been doing other things, getting ready for school and work and stuff. So, um, today, I'm going to actually be tuning the car, and I'll show you what I'm doing, and um, it's really going to be me playing around with it till I get the car right, and then I will show you on a whole nother video, I'll like do a an OBS recording or a screen recording and show you what I did, what I clicked, and I'll make a whole video just in case you're doing it at home and you want to know what I did. So I'll do that, but that's not going to be this video. It'll be a different video. But um, I couldn't drive the car because the tires are so bad, so I ordered new ones and they came today. So I'm going to get these things mounted and put on the car so I can actually do some pulls and once I get the tune ready. But um, I'll show you the tires I got. They're just Federals. They're 255-4017s. I just got them to do burnouts in. I'm gonna be honest. So, I had too much fun with those tires. I'm gonna get the tires mounted and uh, get Tuner Studio set up on my laptop, not my PC. The laptop is slow, so be, be prepared to be unimpressed. <laughs> okay, so I'll just kind of briefly go over what I did and uh, so I uh, plugged in my little thumb drive, right? That um, that comes with the ECU, and then opened it up and has this folder in it. And so you want to go down to setup, and I set it up, and I followed all the prompts. Again, um, I'm gonna make a video recording the screen so you can actually see this better. And uh, but yeah, so I went through all the prompts, I did that, and so this is just the free version, which is kind of stupid. So I ended up having to go online. And let's see if I can show you that. And um, yeah, so I went online and bought Megalog Viewer HD, and I bought Tuner Studio MS Ultra. And then I had to go into Tuner Studio and Megalog Viewer. Oh, it's opened already. And you have to go to Help and. Uh, update or it says enter registration key so I entered my registration key and it just downloaded the ultra versions and so that's what I did to get to where I'm at so as soon as I get the tires put on the car I'm gonna actually start working on this and start seeing if I can tune a car okay so um, we're gonna be pinning our connector our 26 pin connector for my wideband and that's uh, I wrote it down so it's pin 21 on this 26 pin connector and um, so we're going to be installing that and um, it's pretty easy you just you put the lead you take one of the leads let's see so you take one of the leads and you put it into the big end and then it so it'll stick through the small end just enough probably can't see that too well and um, then I'm going to take this guy and tighten it down over it and that's all that it, there is to it. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I'm gonna fast forward. Okay, so I got this installed. One of the things late model restoration doesn't tell you about that I um, really had difficulty with <laughs> is um, see this little screw right there? Just right there. And there's a washer that goes right here. They show it that you can push it in after this is clamped together. You can't do that. Don't try to do that. <laughs> it doesn't work. So what you got to do is like clip, don't screw this together, but have, I'll like, I have it in my time lapse of me doing it, but I, um, I slipped these things in when the bolts were loose and then it just will push right through and then tighten it down. And that works much better than trying to push it through. It's made to not push through. So that was just a little tidbit of advice if you're doing this at home because that freaked me out. But all right, let's get on to the rest. Um, I, yeah, let's get on to the rest. Um, I think I'm gonna wire this to my yellow wire on my wideband. Then, <laughs> I'm just gonna cut some cables and um, I think I can actually start the car, maybe. 
So, okay, let's do this. Okay, so I thought I'd show you the finished wiring just so you guys kind of see. I'm gonna leave it open just in case I do have to change something though, but so that's my fuse box and I wired it up underneath with all the other wires and then it comes down right there into the back of my gauge pod. And I left some extra wires there because I am gonna be putting a boost in an oil pressure gauge and they need power, so I might tap into the illumination, the dash illumination to get that power. So um, this is that side, or this is this side, and I'll show you the next side. Okay, and so I got the mega squirt plugged in, or I will, just the pin connector plugged in, and this guy's running down and um, my yellow wire and it tucks up behind in the glove box up in here and I, this isn't finished wiring I just I want room so I can actually uh, move the ECU if I have to I'm not gonna I'm if I need to move it I want to move it but so this is my vacuum and I got to plug this in to the ECU still I haven't done that and um, but right now I'm getting ready to put the O2 sensor on I have it plugged in t inside the car so I'm gonna do that real quick and I will show you my startup process and I think we'll talk about that later. Okay, so we're below the car, the car is jacked up. So that's the O2 sensor I am getting rid of. We're on the right side. So I'm gonna pop that out. I'm not gonna hook up my um, wideband in there yet because I have to calibrate it first. So um, we're gonna calibrate it, but I am gonna, that connection right there, where the lower bit of red is right there. I'm gonna cover that up with some electrical tape because I guess we don't need that anymore from what I've read. And um, it'll just come straight to the ECU. So, all right, I'm gonna take that out and uh, calibrate the wideband and I'll show you how I do that. All right, so we're back into the car and um, we're gonna calibrate the wideband. So what I read is it's un connected you can see why black wire it's not connected to the sensor right now and the sensor is in free air so it says to connect it and I should get a warning label E2 our air code so let's put it on all right so E2 I gotta let it set here for 30 seconds all right so it's been about 30 seconds I'm gonna turn it off no power and we're gonna hook up the cable real quick, so hold on. Okay, so I hooked up the cable, you can see it there. So now it should say um, heating up or something. Well, let's see what it does. Yeah, heater, okay. So it says wait, it says 30 to 60 seconds, and it'll um, start calibrating itself. And once it shows me an AFR of like all air, like 20, for the max that it has then um, I should be able to plug it in and my um, Innovate is uh, calibrated. Okay, so I guess I didn't record any of that um, Okay, so it came up with Cal and then it popped up with 22.4 which is all air or as much air as it can show me so um, Now that it's done that I can actually plug it back into my exhaust and we're gonna do that real quick and um, see what happens Okay, so the O2 sensor is actually in the exhaust. I'm not gonna start the car, but I just wanna see what it says when I clip it. Heater. 22.4. All right. 22.4, so that's good. All right, so um, now to start the car. So I got the um, ECU hooked up to my computer and um, it wasn't recognizing it and I was like kind of freaking me out so the little CD that you get with the um, the USB to the serial adapter you gotta you gotta download this onto your computer all it is is you run it in your uh, CD drive and then press install driver and um, it'll install the driver so it'll recognize that connection you just made so I just thought I'd point that out real quick but um, I'm gonna get right into it and start actually trying to start the car now. Okay, so I got the tires on the car. It's time to start the car and get it tuned and see what's gonna happen. But here, look at the tires. Ooh, they came out meaty. So, this car needs to be lowered on coils. But, those are some meaty tires. Came out good. But alright, I'm gonna try to get the car started. I will um, probably have some video of me doing it. Not specific, like, not specifics of it. But um, I will have a video of me like getting it started, 
kind of showing you what I'm doing. Like I said, I am going to make a whole video on exactly what buttons I pressed to make this thing work. So um, let's see if I can start this thing. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I've done so far. And um, let me get out of this. But um, sorry, this isn't going to be the best thing because I'm on here. But I went to basic load settings was the first thing. And then um, engine and sequential. And then I went to required fuel. And right there, let's see if I can get a little bit better. It says 302, or I put my engine displacement, my cylinders, my injectors, my target AFR. And so that was cool. So that's what I changed. It was like coming up as 122 in the beginning. So I changed that. Then I didn't mess with anything. I checked these numbers. So my engine size in CCs and my injector flow in CCs. So I checked that. That was all good. So then I went to the tools bar and um, I went to calibrate TPS. And so when I calibrated, it says closed throttle. And um, so I just went get current because it's closed right now. And then I pressed full throttle and then I pressed get current. And that's what I've done so far in the last thing. I'm going to press the X. All right. And so what this is where I'm at right now and so I went to ignition options eh. okay and so this was said um, said use table and I changed it to fixed timing and I didn't change anything so all I did was change it to fixed timing left it alone and so from what I understand I got to start the car or it's time to start the car and then change this value or make sure the timing matches on this so timing for and so that's what I'm gonna do right now so I'm gonna hook up my timing light and get started alright what's up everybody so we are on day five of the mega squirt install so I think this will be part two or it could be part three I don't know so um, last night I showed you a little bit of what I was doing and what I was doing to get the car started so the car wouldn't idle and then I flipped some things then it would idle only at like 1500 rpm so I didn't figure it out I think it has something to do with the um, idle air control valve something is wrong and I can't figure it out so um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a couple minutes and try to figure that out and if I can't I'm just gonna back the car up because it'll run it just won't idle by itself or idle correctly I guess so if I can't get that done like a half hour, I'm going to pull the car out and then I'm going to install the coilovers on my SRT4 just because I I spent like six hours trying to figure it out and I read forms and I just kept reading and reading and reading and I I think I know what to do but I could just be wrong so I'm just 30 minutes. I'm going to test it out, see where I get. If I can't do it, I'm going to make my SRT4 coilover video and do that real quick and so then Tomorrow, Saturday, I will get the Mustang running, driving, idling with the new Mega Squirt. So that's the plan for today. Um, all right. I'm going to do this. <laughs> all right, so I got the car to run. Took a really long time and a lot of research, but I figured it out. And um, tomorrow, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. But um, I got it to run in that, like, it actually turned into, like, an hour. But I did figure it out. So I'm really happy about that. I thought I was able to get it figured out. and know what I'm actually doing with it but I'm gonna get this out of the garage today and I'm gonna work on my SRT just because I'll just give the whole day to the Mustang on Saturday and that'll be tomorrow so um that'll be part two all right I'll see you there okay so I'll show you what I did to get it running because it was just kicking my butt and I kept reading forums and I couldn't figure it out but so I went over here to the can bus test and um, I went to my idle valve and so you see this number right oh it's kind of hard to see oh you see that number PWM idle duty percent and it has 0 to 100 steps and so what I understood from this is that this is when your idle valve opens and when it closes okay so what I had to do was figure out the point where my idle valve was opening and closing and so I was keeping the car running by holding my foot on the gas because it would run then. And then I would I waited to, and kept or this 
stepper starts at zero. And so from zero, I kept clicking up until I felt the RPMs go up. And that started around step 40. So then I kept going up and I think it stopped or it went up to like 1500 RPM, but it stopped, uh, what, what do you call it? It stopped idling higher at that point. So after I knew where open and closed, I went out of here and I went to my ignition settings and I went to, oops, not ignition, I'm sorry. I went to start and idle settings and I went to my idle control. I changed my um, algorithm to from open loop to closed loop. So I went to closed loop and then I keep going the ignition. I went to idle settings and I went to closed loop idle settings. And so right here is where it says idle valve closed duty percent and idle valve open duty percent. So my idle valve didn't open until 42 and it was set to 12. So that's why it wouldn't run is because the idle valve wasn't even open. And then it opened up to 90 and that's when I stopped raising in RPMs. But this value is what made my car run. And it took a lot of time to figure that out. So now that my car will run and idle by itself, I went and verified my timing. So I went to ignition settings and then I went to, so it's at use table, but I switched it to fixed timing and see how that number pops up, the 20 degrees. So what you want to do is make sure your car is running and then you'll go back and nah, you'll go to ignition settings and then go to your trigger wizard and it'll tell you what you should be reading on the car. So it's at zero right now because the car's off. But you're going to want to make sure this matches what's on your car. And that's how I got it to run and verified my timing. And now I'm going to be trying to get it to idle correctly because it has like a, it's hunting for the idle right now and it's going up and down and up and down. So once I figured that out, I'll show you what I did with that as well. So this is just showing you guys what exactly I'm doing to get the car initially started and running and driving. But I'm going to make a whole video about what buttons I pressed, how to get started on Tuner Studio, and to get going. But for right now, this is just what I'm having to do to get the car running right now. Okay, so I started tuning the car and I got down the street and my uh, PC started dying, or my computer, my laptop. And um, I was doing the self-tuner thing that the Tuner Studio has built into it. And it's actually scaring the crap out of me because the AFR will go straight to like 22 and then bounce back up to 13 and then you'll see the computer change on the table and I'll actually when I get the uh, laptop running again I'll try to show you kind of what it's doing while I'm driving down the street but it's pretty scary in it it's working and it's doing its job because I can look at my wideband and the numbers are correcting for themselves and going to my target AFR but it is kind of scary going on the street and you just see like no gas <laughs> but um yeah it works really good so far I barely pulled into the driveway when the piece or my laptop died and <laughs> but yeah so I'm gonna try it again so far so good this is a really cool product tuner studio is awesome so far okay so this is where my idle is at right now I have really low KPA so I had to make my table go a little bit lower but as you can see I'm at 58 and then I put 63 fuel loads around it just so it would stick to this 58 and as you can see on my AFR I'm running about if it'll focus about 13 and a half it'll jump up to 14 too I was trying to get it to around 14 it's running kind of rich right now but it idles real steady and that's what I like I mean you can see it right there it's probably going 800 to 850 but it it's running really good right now and so this is where I had it and my uh, where the car tuned itself pretty much or mega squirt did it for me so it came up here and it made all these changes because the base tune was for higher pressure and the KPA and where I'm at I guess has low pressure so all my fuel and everything was going on right here so it made a bunch of changes to it and I'm gonna go do, drive it some more because I didn't nearly do enough so I need to do that and then there's some other things I want to check on but right now it's running good everything's going really well so um, I'll keep you updated okay so I'm gonna see if I can show you some of what I'm doing right now while I'm in the garage 
So I went, okay, so you got to pay for tuner, tuner Studio for this, but you start out on the gauge cluster. So you start here. And to get the target tune itself, you go to Tune Analyze Live, and then you're brought to this screen. And then it'll auto default you to status, but you want to go to Advanced Settings, and then Cell Change Resistance. Go to ver or I did it a very easy. Another thing, I worked so hard on my idle, so the filter I had, it said don't change anything under 1100 RPM, and that's what I'm going to keep it as. So I'm going to drive it down the street and show you kind of what's going on. Um, you can see that's where I'm idling right now. So I just got done driving it down the street, letting it tune itself, and let me show you what it looks like now. So that's what my fuel table looks like. I messed with this again because it, it jacked up my idle just a touch. But um, yeah, so it changed a lot. I mean, it changed the whole tune quite a bit. So this is what my fuel table looks like now. And um, maybe I'll just link what it, it was before I started this. But yeah, it was totally, it changed a lot of things. But it runs really, really good now. And I can't complain at all. I mean, it's tuned well. I'm probably just going to make little tweaks here and there. I did try to mess with launch control and it, it's going to be tough. <laughs> so I did try to mess with launch control a little bit. And I don't know what I'm doing. It wasn't hitting the limiter right. So I got to mess with that. Kind of figure out more of what I'm doing before I talk about it and act like I know what I'm doing <laughs> but uh, otherwise I'm really satisfied with the mega squirt everything's coming out really good like I said I'm going to make another video of exactly what buttons I pressed and how I made this car run like with a screen record but that'll probably be my next video but otherwise super happy with the result there was a couple things that some hiccups that I had to go through to get the mega squirt running in the first place but otherwise really good love it so far it tuned the car by itself for me really well um i love this thing so i just can't be i couldn't be happier with it so i think that's going to be the end of today's video I, I will have some more videos coming out about it because i still don't know too much but this was the install this is what i did to get it running right off the bat so thanks for tuning in and if you like this video leave a like subscribe and tell me what you think tell me if i left something out just uh let me know. All right, guys, I'll catch you next time. All right, before I get these things uh, mounted, I just thought it was an honorable mention to show you the tires off the car. As you follow the channel and you learn who I am more and more, you're going to find out I like burnouts. And um, I have no concern of my tires at all. So these were fairly new. Um, yeah, these were fairly new. So, the burnout just ripped the middle tread out, and you can see the other one. <laughs> I just thought it was worth showing you the, what kind of man I am. <laughs>